We need to get the country to a point where we don't do cancel culture anymore and it's frowned upon either way. Companies make mistakes, bro. People make mistakes. And to ruin their whole brand or ruin somebody's life because they said something wrong or they said something 10 years ago or two years ago or a month ago, that's unreasonable shit. And it has everybody anxious. It has everybody on the verge. It has everybody depressed and scared to participate in society. And dude, it's no way to live. Your beard's getting way out there, bro. Dude, you know what? I've been puffing that thing on, out or what? I, no, I've been working on it. I have a, a, a regimen, actually. You do? Yeah. What it, tell yeah, me about it. So, so there, there, it starts with a beard wash yeah. in the shower. A wash or a wash? A wash. Is there an R in there? Might be. Okay. I, Is there not? You don't have a wash? A wa- I don't have a wash. It's not that bad. Is that's, it that bad? Something like that. Is it there, really? No, that's a, that's a St. Louis thing. Wash. That's a St. Louis Midwest accent. I, threw, I hear it now. I hear it now. Yeah. I threw the R in there. It's, it's a lowercase R, though. It's not heavy. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so tell me about your, yeah, so your, your wash. Usually when I take showers, yeah. there's an R in shower. There is an R there. Um, I do a beard wash. <laughs> oh, fuck. It's like a beard shampoo conditioner. Okay. okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you then after, talk, tell us what brand you use. Uh, it's it's free- Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace. Yeah, shameless plug. Not an ad. Got it at Wally's right not, down the street. Not an ad. But the shit works. It's okay. phenomenal. Um, yeah, I, they don't send me anything, so it's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I shampoo, condition. You know the beard. Yeah. Keeps it nice, and then I, I always oil it. Yeah. Um, with the with it looks the good, dude. Concoction of oils. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It looks good. Thank you, man. Yeah, I've been working on it, man. Yeah. Part of I've I, I've had. Have you ever had days where like sometimes you just like. You ever like thought about having like a major like outward look change? Yeah, I did it the other day. Do you notice that? I shaved yeah, you, my be- you definitely my changed. Beer, your- my beard was real long. Yeah, you, and I, you and shaved, I shaved it, it off on yeah. uh, su- Sunday. But I'm talking about like clean shave, like man, I, I, you know, real talk. Like I, I got to have the beard, man. I'm an <laughs> ugly dude. Like I got to have it. Like it is what it is. Where, have you always had? I've, a beard? I've been tricking people for 11, 15, 11 12 years, <laughs> 15 man. Years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to have it. Who the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Well, my it. whole plan is real simple. It's like once I get done doing what I'm going to do in the world, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to pull the old uh, Sulla trick. Okay. You know, and just retire to the farm. When I go to the farm, bro, I shave my beard, grow my hair out long, and you motherfuckers won't know where to find me. I love it. Yeah. Wait, so if, if you became president, would you do the? Would you be the first president to not rock a clean shaven? That's like a thing. Not a first one. Like, dude, General Grant, President Grant had a beard. I don't think he had a beard while he was in office. I fucking pretty sure he did. Did he? I don't Let's know. Fact check Look that. that shit up. Well, if you did, like I thing. would definitely be the you, first you guy would be to do the it. first. Yeah. Okay. He ain't shaving the beard. Yeah, no, bro, it's, I get it. I, I get it. Dude, it's, people would be so disappointed if I did. <laughs> <laughs> people being me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah in office. A couple guys had a beard. Hmm. Who's that dude? Was that Taft that had those fucking crazy ass sideburns? Hmm. Remember, you know what I'm talking about? Like the lamb chops? That'd be a good look, too. I can see you rocking lamb chops. I could see it. But what yeah, you, man, look, I'm not trying to offend anybody's fucking eyes. I just gonna keep it, <laughs> keep it nice. You know? I do like it though. Yeah, I, I like I like it. It's a good look. Yeah. Thanks, yeah I think bro. you should I think you should grow it longer. I have dude, you know what? It I, makes my face look so much fucking fatter, bro. I can't stand it. Really? Yeah. So hmm. anyway. Um it is CTI, yeah, man. We got, we got a lot of on. shit on the books, man. We got we got red, white, and Bud Light. We got uh, what else I got for you? Can we guys? talk about that. Oh yeah, I got. Good, I want to talk about. Yeah, that. I got that. I got um, some uh, Trump raid stuff, and uh, I got some good shit, man. All right, cool. There, there's some good topics here, yeah. guys. Remember, if you want to see any of these topics, uh, links, articles, videos, pictures, go to andyforseller.com. You can find them linked there, or if you're on YouTube, drop down in the description below. And you can find them linked there for you. And guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, first of all, uh, thank you. Like, this is a new thing for us. Um, we just started about 90 days ago. So, it's you know, it seems to be going pretty well. You know, we've got some nice, steady, organic growth. Yeah, People seem to be liking it. Yeah. yeah um, growers, not showers. You know, it's a big difference. Yeah, no shit. Growers, <laughs> not showers. But, uh, you know, we've been audio exclusive for, you know, eight years. And, and doing the YouTube is a new thing. So, if, if you guys are on YouTube and... Uh, you're watching it there, you know, spread that word out too for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The audio people are kind of used to it, but you know, YouTube, what I'm discovering is very few people are moving from audio to YouTube. Mm. Uh, the people who are watching on YouTube are basically like a new, like they're brand like new, new people. Yeah. yeah. 
So for sorry. those, are, sorry, yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I don't shave my beard, right? I don't want to offend their eyes. Um, but hey, man, I appreciate you got. Yeah, dude, that's a good look right Chester there. Chester Allen. A- a- who is it? Chester Allen Arthur. That's a good one. There's another one though. I think Taft had it too. Did he not? Taft had the little. Did he? Oh, okay. All right, I got confused. Anyway, I appreciate the fuck out of you guys, yeah. and uh, we would appreciate if you help us, you know, share the show and uh, ask your friends to. Watch it on YouTube. Check it out. We're trying to do some cool stuff. I know I promised you guys that we would have a car episode on April 8th. Uh, I overpromised. We just weren't able to get it done. And and, uh, when we get it done, we'll get going on that too. So that's my fault, not the team's fault. 100% my fault um, just for overpromising. So that's coming. Anyway, on with the show. Yeah, let's get into these, man. Uh, Guys, headline number one. Now, Andy, you're an entrepreneur, 24 years. I am. You know your customers. You know how to listen to your market. Okay, so we, we got, I mean, I think it's pretty evident you, you know a little bit. Of I don't think I listen to my market as much as I just say who the fuck I am and what we are and then allow the market to be created. Unapologetically, right? <clears throat> but you don't switch it up on them, right? I try not to. Well, maybe maybe uh, Bud Light and AB, uh, AB InBev needs you over there to consult because they're, they're losing their mind. So let, let's dig into this. So the headline reads, Bud Light distributors spooked by backlash to Dylan Mulvaney partnership. Um, So Anheuser-Busch distributors in the South were, quote, spooked by the widespread backlash Bud Light received after teaming up with transgender social media star Dylan Mulvaney. Uh, The intense opposition to Mulvaney promoting the beer has been alarming to Anheuser-Busch distributors, which placed fewer orders after the partnership sparked outrage from conservatives who argued the company is pushing, quote, gender propaganda, according to a uh, Beer Business Daily report reviewed by Fox News. Quote, we reached out to a handful of A.B. and heiser Bush distributors who were spooked, most particularly in the heartland and the south, and even in their more rural areas, uh, the popular beer industry trade publication wrote. <clears throat> uh, beer Business Daily said it assessed the situation, quote, purely from a marketing and sales perspective noting uh, that the current data are very limited, but, quote, it appears likely Bud Light took a volume hit in some markets over the holiday weekend, since rural customers are also most likely to celebrate Easter. <clears throat> quote, uh, whether it's last or whether the publicity sparks incremental offsetting demand from over the ideological divide in the metro areas remains to be seen. The publication wrote, adding that it will be difficult for Bud Light to, quote, appeal to the sensitivities of a new generation of drinkers without offending some longtime customers. Uh, Quote, I've never seen the country so hotly divided, sadly, the author of the report wrote. Mulvaney, a popular TikTok influencer with over 10 million followers, uh, was sent a Bud Light, a pack of Bud Lights uh, with their face printed on the cans as part of an ad for the beer company's March Madness contest. Uh, The influencer is particularly popular amongst the Gen Z population and demographic, um, a demographic that beer companies are desperate to try to reach, according to the publication. Bud Light has stood behind its decision to enlist Mulvaney as a brand ambassador, noting uh, the brand works with hundreds of influencers uh, with all of its customers. Quick look at the stocks. Damn. They ain't been doing too good. Now, that's just in the last five days. Time will tell for sure. Um, but there's some interesting things behind this, okay? So, so this lady, um, this is Alyssa uh, Herninshed. She is the VP of Bud Light, um, and this is her LinkedIn profile. She has pronouns in the bio. Look how it says, first female. Like, I don't give a fuck the first anything. Are no. you good? Is the beer good? Are you good at what you do? Yep. I'm so sick of hearing the, the first this. The first that. How about you're the first VP to ruin the company? How about that? <laughs> the first to take it. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, bro, after all went up, she 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 deleted her LinkedIn bio and picture, and now the profile's just gone. Um, now, here's a video I want us to watch and want our listeners to listen to real quick. Uh, this is a video um, of uh, the Bud Light Vice President of Marketing, Alyssa Herninshed, uh, recently said that she hoped to update the, quote, fatty and out of touch uh, humor of the beer company and make the brand appeal to younger customers. Uh, here she is. I had a really clear job to do when I took over Bud Light. And it was this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. 
And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like we need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. And my, what I brought to that was a belief in, okay, what is what, do, what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and to men. Mm -hmm. And representation is at sort of the heart of evolution. You've got to see people who reflect you in the work and we had this hangover i mean bud light had been kind of a brand of bratty kind of out of touch humor and it was really important out of touch with who <laughs> hold, hold on out of touch with who okay just because you live in a far left progressive world does not mean that humor that you don't understand is out of touch what it means is actually that you're out of touch realizing, failing to realize that there are tens of millions of people that think shit is funny that you may not think is funny. Right. Okay. I'm one of them. Right. By the way. right. Especially after a couple of butt lights. Yeah. <laughs> Please continue. And to men. Mm -hmm. And representation is at sort of the heart of evolution. You've got to see people who reflect you in the work. And we had this hangover. I mean, Bud Light had been kind of a brand of bratty, kind of out of touch humor and it was really important that we yeah, had that was, that was the end of the video um but again yeah so she's completely went off social media this mm -hmm. is the original can that everybody was up in up in arms about and like i said i mean bud light made a statement initially just saying that hey this was not you know these cans are not for the sale they're mm -hmm. not for the public consumption they were you know kind of just sent just to dylan um what do we got? I mean, but Kid, Kid Rock's kicked in on it. You know, I, I don't know if you've seen the video. There's a lot of, <clears throat> lot of here and there. But from your your perspective of a well established entrepreneur, what are they missing here? Quite a bit. Um, I think there's a lot to this. It's a lot. It's a lot deeper than just saying you know fuck Bud Light or fuck AB products or boycott their shit. You know, first of all. These companies are pressured to hire people from these schools and these colleges that are Ivy League. You know, really, it doesn't matter if they're Ivy League anymore, but where, you know, diversity and inclusion is the highlight of their entire philosophy on how to do anything. All right. So meritocracy is no, it's no longer meritocracy. How good are you at doing your job? It's now, like she said in her bio, the first whatever, the first female, the first trans, the first this, the first that, the first this. Listen, lady, you're, at, you're legitimately the first VP ever in the history of Anheuser-Busch to cost the company $4 billion in fucking value of, of their company, okay? That's what you are. Mm -hmm. You're a shitty fucking marketer and a shitty VP. And because of your decision and your need and your out-of-touchness when you're calling Bud Light out-of-touch, go ahead and Google what the number one... Uh, beer served in bars and restaurants is, all right, while I'm talking. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we have a lot going on here, okay? These people come into these organizations and then make decisions that unbeknownst to the executives, because dude, look, my, my, I don't know what my marketing team does. Mm. I don't fucking know what they do. I know they have parameters about what they're supposed to do. But I don't know what they do every single post or every single thing. I can't fucking know that. It's impossible, yeah. I can't know that. So the executives hired this woman in to come in who's been indoctrinated to put these things at the top of the agenda, diversity, inclusion, instead of actual skills and marketing. And there's a complete different thing here. All right, mm -hmm. that, those are two different things. Making people feel good because they're included and producing a fucking result are two different fucking things. And in business, I'm sorry to say, uh, it's about producing a result. And people want to drink beer without worrying about politics. They don't want this shit jammed down their throat. The backlash of the quote unquote regular freedom loving American is getting stronger and stronger and stronger, evidenced by the backlash that we're seeing here. Now, with that being said, do I think it's uh, valid? Yeah, I actually do think it's valid. But I think we as consumers should start to truly consider that cancel culture is bad for every fucking 
buddy, okay? Because here's what's actually happening. You, you guys are all boycotting Bud Light. I understand. I get it. I, I do get it. And, but for the last 10 years, when they've done that shit to, to, other, to us, we hated it, mm-hmm. right? And now the tide's turned. And this is the example I've been trying to say for many years on the show of the pendulum swinging back. And the pendulum is going to swing back much harder because for the last 10 years, the progressive left has utilized and weaponized technology in collusion with big tech to punish people that step outside the narrative in their marketing. I've had my brands canceled a dozen different times, more than a dozen, probably a hundred different times, okay? All it did every time was bring attention to me um, and grow our business, okay? But that's because they've been lying about the actual numbers and the reality the of actual the actual market. Yeah. This is actual cancel culture because the actual market is the majority of these people who are boycotting this brand, which is why they're able to create such a difference. There will be no more people drinking Bud Light unless they do a, a really smart strategic decision, which would be to come out and say, hey, this woman made this decision on her own. It, this is, this is a, not reflective of our core audience. Pay attention to the numbers and fucking do the right thing to fucking appeal to the people that like actually support you, which is mostly people that don't agree with the things that Dylan Mulvaney is doing for a number of different reasons. It's not just because they're transphobic. That's not what we're saying. Um, These trans men, these men are making a mockery of women. They're taking the place of women in sports. They're taking the place of women with endorsement deals. They're taking the place of women with scholarships. They are literally replacing women in all different aspects and people ain't about it. So this isn't just like, oh, they're transphobes. Those, those, uh, those white, the fratty fucking beer drinkers are transphobes. That's not what this is. This is, we recognize something culturally is happening that nobody really is with a very small, and they're trying to force the agenda into play. Like I've explained many times on the show before. So we're dealing with someone who has taken it upon herself to push an agenda that is now hurting most of like, dude, most of these families like, dude, think about the trickle down economics from from Anheuser Busch. I was just about to say okay? that, man. We have uh, Gray Eagle right down the street here. My friend owns it. These are fucking good people, bro. They're an Anheuser Busch distributor. They're one of the best companies in the fucking whole St. Louis area and have been for decades. They give more back. They take care of people in the community. The people that work there are red, white, and blue Americans that give a fuck about the things that we talk about on this show all the time. And because this one person did this fucking fucked up thing. Now we're actually, because those are the people that are going to feel this hurt. Mm -hmm. All right. Those are the people, these families. It's the beer makers. Yes, dude. And and so like, there's no consideration given to that. And I don't stand for cancel culture, no matter who it, now I understand there's a, there's going to be an uncomfortable point in time, which I believe that we are currently in where it's going to have to be used to reset what companies do. But generally I don't agree with it at all. I think it's bad coming from the left and it's bad coming from the right. And I don't think it's okay. I believe in a free market. I believe that, you know, you're going to make decisions that are bad and people are going to stop shopping with you. You're going to make decisions that are good and people will shop with you. And this is a very bad decision based upon who buys and drinks this beer very clearly by the result of the action. And so, you know, what, I, what concerns me, and, and, and I've talked about this before. I just talked about this the other day on the show. The mob mentality that we have as a culture right now is extremely dangerous, dude. And because the left has pushed it so hard for so many years, now we're going to start seeing the pendulum swing back. And it's going to swing back with a much heavier hand than what came out the first time. Mm -hmm. And these people are getting pulverized. And part of me, like, I'm like, yeah, I fucking told you. Stop fucking with people. And this is what happens. Just like everybody else. Like, part of me gets it. Like, part of me is like, dude, you shouldn't have done that. Well, because what's the dangers, and it's like, okay, if, if there is no public cancel culture of Bud Light, right? Like, what message is that going to be sending? That's right. right. And, I, and it's I, a dangerous thing. I, I totally get it, dude. I totally get it's it. It's a hard spot, man. But I know, but, but what I'm saying is I think that we, as Americans, need to make cancel culture fucking not cool, regardless of who the fuck it comes from. Yeah. Um, I understand there's going to be a short period of time, but like, we have to be real careful to not let this go the other way completely or we'll end up in just a fucking echo chamber where you know if you if you don't go to church every sunday and you don't worship the lord the way certain people want you to mm-hmm. they'll fucking burn you at the stake mm-hmm. it's happened before in history so like 
this this whole mob mentality from both sides is dangerous. And I would just encourage people to have some empathy for the families um, that work at these companies. Yeah. And like, dude, the families that work at these companies and the, like these guys down here in the street that are really good friends of ours, those guys should be letting these people fucking have it. Like and saying, hey, why are you fucking with our livelihood over this shit where we should be just be drinking fucking beer, bro? Yeah. You know, yeah. like, like, dude, I want to get back to an America where we're free to enjoy the products that we, we, we want to enjoy. We do not have political ideology slammed down through our advertising and our marketing. And a lot of this comes from the size of these companies too, right? And the diversity and inclusion, the diversity and inclusion uh, standards and the ESG standards that a lot of these companies must abide by in order to uh, be in with the banks that finance their projects, mm -hmm. okay? So like a You're lot of this there. shit is forced down the pipe in order to get to culture and, and the people at the World Economic Forum at the top, see, people don't understand the flow. People at the World Economic Forum make the policy. The World Economic Forum decides what companies, uh, what the standards are for the companies to qualify for their financing. These companies have to do certain things. The, the, the Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies have to do certain things to qualify to do business with the biggest banks in the world. So then they do these things and then they alienate the customer, okay? And I'm not so sure, like, Putting on my fucking tin. Hold on. No, no, I, I oh, know exactly on. where you're going. I know. Hold on. <laughs> Got to put it on. All right. <laughs> it's, it's a little crooked. Yeah. Hey, gotta get my. Gotta get it right here. Radio waves. Right? All right. So here yeah. I am. All right. And I'm not so sure that the the fact that this happened with listen, Bud Light. <laughs> what? What? I'm trying to make a serious point here. You guys are fucking <laughs> laughing at me. I got Look at this. You. I got You're fucking you. up my whole game. Okay, for real, for real, for real. I got you. No, but listen, Bud Light, Jack Daniels, and Nike all in the same fucking week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm not so sure that this wasn't intentionally propagated and organized from inside these companies, from people outside the companies, in order to actually punish the hardworking class Americans and push the middle class further into poverty because that's ultimately who's going to lose their jobs here. Absolutely. All right, so that's how I'm considering what may be going on here. Now, maybe I'm overthinking it and maybe, maybe, no, maybe no. I'm receiving the wrong signals and my fucking antennas here. It's backwards. <laughs> yeah, but the point is, is that we're, we're not only going to force Americans out of careers and make them go from middle class to poverty level because of this cancel culture, we're actually, uh, demoralizing the public because these three brands represent American culture so deeply that people are becoming disenfranchised with them that they have no identity to the brands that represent America. Mm -hmm. All right. So I like, do when we talk about cultural demoralization, which we've talked about, which is a communist fucking tool, which they use to take over countries. This to me, that's what this looks like. Well, what else did, what else just happened this last week? What else was declared over? COVID. Right. Guess what? Guess what went along with the COVID emergency being declared over? All the unemployment benefits that everybody's been reaping for the last three years, which means that once these Americans that work at these distributors and work at AB, once they lose their jobs. The, the distributors and the customers and the restaurants who are all getting fucking hammered with this shit should be demanding that the people at Bud Light make an adjustment and fucking address this issue. Probably. Immediately. Yeah. Immediately, man. Bud Light was the number one selling beer. Shocking. 2020. The brand's in, the brand's in decline and has been for a long time. Flat out fucking lie out of this lady's mouth. Flat out lie. The brand's doing great. Bro, every, every bar I've ever been to in the fucking planet, bro, they got Bud Light. Yeah. Every time I've been to Europe, every time I've been to Mexico, no matter where the fuck I go, no matter where I go, they got Bud Light. And they don't have any beer. Bro, they got Bud Light. They got Bud Light. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, dude, you know, she's lying. Okay, that's a cover story. And in my opinion, this is one of two things. One, they allowed this woman in, they hired her in, and she just made this decision because she thinks that's what she should do. And if that's the case, then she should be fired and she should never be hired by a company ever again to, to put her personal beliefs into some company's marketing. Look how it hurts families. Mm. Look how it hurts workers. Okay, that woman is cancer to any company that she ever works with. And by the way, anybody with pronouns in their bio is going to be a headache for you. That's just a little entrepreneur tip. All right. So think about who you're hiring and who you're bringing in and, and start to consider what they could potentially do, because this is a classic 
a number one example of the damage that one person could potentially do acting on their own when you think you're hiring somebody progressive, mm -hmm. right? You don't need to reevaluate your brand when you're the number one fucking beer in the fucking world, which is statistical fucking fact. In, U in the U.S. Okay, like well, in the, the U.S. In the US yeah. All right. So uh, I'm sure it's in the top fucking three in the world. Top four. In the okay, world. there we go. Good guess, huh? <laughs> Missed it by one. It's real shit, I'm man. just saying. That's one thing it could be. The other thing it could be is what I'm saying. It could be a fucking coordinated plot. effort to, to demoralize the population, to push American families that work at these three brands into further into lower uh, into poverty level, which is how they have to have the, the economic structure of society for communism to actually work. Well, the thing is, it doesn't really matter why it happened. The, the, the effects and damages are going to be the same, regardless of whether that was an individual, an individual but, act or an impl a fucking thought through process. I, listen, man, I'm torn on it because I know so many fucking people that work for this company personally, no. and I know the kind of people they are. They're fucking great people, dude. And, but I also agree that the, this company shouldn't be jamming something down the throats of, our, of, of their customers. Um, where where it's four percent of the population at best. Yeah. Okay. So it's a bad move. Um, dude, I, he doesn't I, even look like he likes the fucking beer. He's on, not man. like, come on, man. It doesn't matter. He's like, used to wheat dude. and oat milk fucking IPAs, bro. Come on. <laughs> no. That ain't yeah. what, that, that look, ain't he, what, this is so no, good. That, Bullshit. No, that ain't what he's been drinking. <laughs> All right. Different Kool Aid. I'm just saying. <laughs> So, yeah. so like, look, dude, here's the reality. I, I think that a cancel culture, while an appropriate tool right now to reset the standard, at some point in time, we have to come to terms with this is bad for everybody. This is bad for everybody. In some way, shape, or form. And companies should go back to being pro-American. Have your beliefs. Like, bro, my companies, I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't care who you are. If you believe in that flag and you believe in freedom and you have an opinion that's different than mine, that's totally fucking cool. I treat you with respect. This, this is none of, none of this shit. Business does not need to be politicized. It shouldn't be. People don't want it. People don't want political views jammed down through uh, the products they consume. They don't want it. I'm fucking tired of it. Mm -hmm. Everybody's tired of it. So at some point, we as Americans have to say like, dude, by participating in this, we're actually being fooled to propagate a weapon in society that does not serve American culture or the families that, that work at these companies at all. And we have to be better than that. No. And, and like, dude, I know some of you are going to be upset and you're going to say, you're going to say, well, you're def I'm not defending it. I think it's wrong. They shouldn't have done it. But what I'm saying is, is it right that, you know, thousands potentially of American families that are blue collar, hardworking people are going to get laid off because this one person did this one thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's right either. And I think that's the bigger right of the scenario. Yeah. So like, I don't, you know, that's real. What, what do you guys think? Tell us in the comments. Yeah, I, listen, they fucked up. Yeah. But like at some point, dude, you know, hopefully soon, hopefully sooner than later, we need to get the country to a point where we don't do cancel culture anymore. And it's frowned upon either way. Companies make mistakes, bro. People make mistakes and to ruin their whole fucking brand or ruin somebody's life because they said something wrong or they said something 10 years ago or two years ago or fucking a month ago. One, you know, like that's unreasonable shit. And it has everybody anxious. It has everybody on the verge. It has everybody depressed and scared to participate in society. And dude, it's no way to live. It's not how we should be having it here in this country. That's real, man. So I, you know, I, I see it from all sides, man. I think, I hope Bud Light, the executives can, do a smart thing and like basically realign. Right this wrong. Because dude, here's the thing. If they came out and said, yeah, motherfucker, you're right. We are America's brand. We're red, white, and blue. Motherfucker, by, by July, people be having 4th, 4th of July fucking Bud Light fireworks in the sun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so like there's a strategic move here that they could fucking do, but whether they have the balls to do it or not, I don't know, because it seems like they're doubling down on it, yeah. which I think is just going to make shit worse and worse and worse. Yep. Because I, I, and again, I it makes more sense if that was all a part of the plan to begin with. You can't make decisions for numbers that don't exist in business. You cannot fucking make decisions about products and how you're going to market for numbers that you are, that don't exist. It's a numbers game. It's math, bro. 96% of our people think this. 4% of our people think this. What, you don't make a decision to benefit the 4% of the people. Like, it's just a fucking terrible business decision. 
especially when it's a product that already unites people. Like, bro, we're at a bar. I don't care if you- That's if what I'm telling you, bro. Like, bro, beer. beer. <laughs> DJ, that's what I'm trying to tell you, dude. That's why I think it's more than just a stupid mistake. Yeah. When it happens consistently with these three brands, these three iconic American brands in one fucking week, right? Now, Nike's a, a repeat offender. Like, yeah, for you know, sure. buy first form. That's a, <laughs> that's a fucking ad. That's why I'm fucking building the company. Right. All right? The reason I built the company, the reason I'm building the company is to replace them. All right? So buy first form. Instead of fucking Nike. I'll say that right now. That's why we do what we do. But the other two brands, they're not repeat offenders. And these people, there should be grace given to the families that have been vested and have their careers in these companies. The truck drivers, the fucking delivery guys, the bar owners, the distributors. Like, bro, the thousands of employees they employ just here at the brewery, right? You know what I'm saying? There's breweries all over the world. Like, it's a difficult situation to navigate. And I have a lot of fucking empathy because I know a lot of people there that are great people that are, that are like, like in real life, like what the fuck did they do this for? Mm -hmm. And now it's fucking with them. Yeah. It's sad. Uh, guys, let us know in the comments what you guys think about this, uh, Bud Light situation. Uh, but that was headline number one. Let's move right along. We got headline number two. Headline number two reads, Biden administration officials were involved in Mar-a-Lago raid despite claiming otherwise. Huh. Shocking. Yeah, very, very shocking. Yeah, very, very shocking. So uh, the, this uh, the Fox News headline uh, article reads, uh, the Biden administration involved itself in the raid of former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home despite reports that its officials were, quote, stunned to find out about the news on social media. Quote, the evidence further suggests that Biden officials in the executive office of the president and the Department of Justice unlawfully abused their power and then lied about it to the American people, said Reed D. Rubenstein, American First Legal Senior Counselor and Director of Oversight and Investigations, in a post on social media Tuesday. Quote, this government, it seems, acknowledges no limits on its power to harass, intimidate, and silence its political opponents. Rubenstein's comments come after a Freedom of Information Act request by America First Legal found the FBI initially obtained access to Trump's records through a, quote, special access request from the Biden White House. Uh, the new information confirms Fox News reporting from August uh, when NARA acting head uh, Deborah Wall wrote a letter to Trump's attorney alluding to the administration's involvement. Records show that John Laster, the archives official uh, responsible for administering all access requests for presidential records, was involved in the request despite the archives previously claiming it had not been involved in the DOJ investigation. Um, if the Office of Inspector General acted independently in making the referral to the FBI, then Mr. Laster would not have involved himself in the FBI's review of the 15 boxes in his capacity as the director of White House Liaison Division, responsible for all access requests for presidential records. Um, according to America First Legal, the special access statute, quote, authorizes special access requests to an incumbent president only when the records in question are needed for the conduct of current business of the White House. Uh, provide, quote, providing documents for the DOJ for purposes of a criminal investigation is not the current business of the White House, the organization said. Uh, the August letter from uh, Wall to Trump attorney Evan Corkin uh, seem, also seemingly hinted at President Biden's involvement. So they, so they knew. And the question here, and of course we know the answer, but I, like the question here, is this all connected? Is there, why, why are they, what did Trump do? To make them want to arrest him, raid Mar-a-Lago, and what precedence does this set for everyday Americans? Andy, what do you got on this? Well, it goes back to the pendulum analogy. Okay, um, you know, I, <laughs> I hate to say I told you so. Not really. I kind of like saying, <laughs> it. Um, you know, guys, I, I've been saying this for years and years and years. Um, the pendulum for the last twelve to 15 years has been pushed so far to the left. It was only a matter of time before it comes back to the right and it's coming back to the right. And these people recognize it and they're willing to do anything that they need to do to keep Trump from becoming president of the United States again, because they know that if Trump comes in, 
just like Biden did on day one. He's going to sign a fuck ton of executive orders. He's going to put a fucking nail in the coffin of a bunch of this woke shit. He's going to bring back freedom in America as, as much as a p- politician will. Mm-hmm. Okay. If it were me, I would do a lot more. Um, but, you know, they're scared of him. And I actually think the fact that they are persecuting this man the way that they are is going to really blow up hard in their face because you ask what precedent does this set? Yeah. Well, this actually sets the precedent for him to come back in power and literally arrest them all. Do the uh, same exact thing. Yeah, not just the Biden. All, all of them. them. Yeah. Okay. And that's where they fucked up. Like, and I think they're going to learn that lesson real harshly. And yeah. I think there's, I don't think there's going to be many people to defend them when those things start happening. No. Um, if somehow now, the other thing I'll say is that it's interesting because, <clears throat> you know, I personally believe that they cheat in these elections. Um, I think there's a lot of evidence that shows that you, you guys say, oh, where's the proof? Bro, there's tons of proof. The media is not covering it. There's court cases that are Dude, still going listen, on. The, the justice system is fucking biased. It's completely biased. Like you're saying, oh, where's the proof? The judges said it was blah, blah, blah. But look what the judges and the courts are doing now to this man. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You mean the judge like the, whose the fu- daughter worked on the campaign? Yes. For- <laughs> what people are not understanding, brother, is that the, the, the justice system, just like the executive branch of the government, is compromised. And these people are all working in collusion together to get, to get their way and stay in power. And they're going to do anything they can to do that. However, I don't think it's going to work because I think when you show Trump and he's got 50,000 people to show up and you show Biden and he's got four, right? We're seeing the real numbers in America. We're seeing them. And just because you don't see conservatives or moderates out in the streets rioting every time they don't get their way doesn't mean that the other team has the numbers. Mm-hmm. Like if the true conservatives came to the streets and the, and the, and the, and the moderates came to the streets, the, sh- the people who are truly upset with what's going on, dude, you would not even be able to see where the end of people are. Like, that's the thing. What we're seeing in reality with these Antifa people and all this shit, we're seeing a couple hundred people. Bro, remember what J6 looked like? Yeah. You couldn't see the end of people. Okay, so the real numbers are becoming obvious to most Americans. They're understanding, like, these people on the far left have created an illusion with colluding with the big tech companies to, to own the narrative. And they've used bots. They've used favorable algorithms for them propping up of, of their people and their narratives and they use bots, right? Like fake engagement. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then they suppress the other side and this creates an illusion, right? Just like in 2016, when I made a critical post about Hillary Clinton, I had like 10,000 comments in less than five minutes, which is literally fucking impossible to get. All right. So that made me like say like back then when I didn't know what was going on, I was like, holy shit, dude. I better shut the fuck up. I didn't realize that so many people felt this way. But I found out, what I found out was those were all fake accounts, okay? And and what Twitter files exposed was that they've been doing this at mass across, presumably, all social media platforms. That creates a fake narrative that shows fake numbers, that creates a fake impression that's designed to suppress the the regular common sense people from speaking out against the fuckery. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's being exposed. So I don't know. I don't know how they're going to stop what's going on. And I think they're going to try to cheat in the election again, but that's why, and they're going to do it the same way they did it in 22, the same way they did in 20. It's going to be the same States. It's going to be Georgia. It's going to be Pennsylvania. It's going to be Michigan. It's going to be Wisconsin. uh, It's going to be Nevada. It's going to be Arizona. And I might be figuring out missing one or two there. Uh, But it's going to be in those key places again. And so if you're in those key places and you want this shit to end, you're going to have to organize people in those key places to actually fucking play the game that these people have been playing, which includes ballot harvesting, which includes voter intimidation, which includes monitoring the boxes. Like, bro, if you're in Atlanta and you're in fucking any of these cities that I just mentioned, Philadelphia, Detroit, uh, Phoenix, like where these where this uh, uh, Vegas, like like. Uh, you know, even New York City and places in California, if you're, bro, if you're in these places and you're not actively organizing with people in those places to at least watch the ballot boxes, at least like stand guard, make sure people aren't dumping 
5,000 fucking boats off at a time at two o'clock in the morning and shit, we're going to lose again. We're going to lose again. And this is something I hope that people in all those geographical areas are going to pay attention to and get organized about. And that organization should start right now. But I think these people are desperate. I think they're willing to do anything to hang on to power. I think, uh, you know, they have enough people brainwashed to hate Trump that, you know, they feel justified in doing so. Um, you know, I still see people. I saw a comment today, like uh, it was a, a, a post uh, about this uh, coffee shop up in Portland that's closing. I was reading it. And there was all the crime and shit. There was, yeah, because yeah. of crime. They're closing their coffee shop. They opened in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, and I... I was reading it and I went and looked at the comments and like, bro, the comments there, like these people are still about the crime. They're like, crime's out of control and they're blaming Trump. Like they're, they're saying because of Trump's, like you guys are a special kind of stupid. Yeah. Like, can you not realize that you've been propagated to believe that and that any single item that you say you hate about Donald Trump, there is an actual argument to say that that's not true. Mm -hmm. The Charlotte's, oh, the meat, the, all they could say is I don't like him as a person, which is fine. You don't have to like leading the ship. We just don't want the ship to hit any icebergs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I had this talk with my guys, like my job, my job here is very simple. My job is not to do anything other than get us to where we're going. And if you don't like the way I can talk, you don't like the way I do it. You don't, bro, you're free to go elsewhere. I wish the best for you, but we're getting to that point. And if you don't like the way I talk, maybe you should behave in a way that doesn't like the way that doesn't justify the way of how I talk. Yeah. My job is not to make you comfortable. My job is actually just to get us to where we go so that you, your family, family's family can actually survive. That's my job. That's his job too. And people have this unrealistic rec expectation of our leadership now that they're supposed to be always these like, bro, like to lead shit in a real way, you have to be a fucking savage. Like you, you guys are one of these pussy ass leaders that to come in and run our government that's, that are all buttoned up those people smile in your face and steal out of your back pocket at the same fucking time, bro. Mm -hmm. We need people that are fucking savages for the people, people that will lead our country in a place where our people will actually benefit from the government system that we have. And we don't have that right now. You know what I'm saying? Like our government system, the structure of it does not operate without true freedom oriented people from the real world operating it. Like Eric Schmidt, who's our senator here in Missouri, this dude went to the Smet High School. He played baseball. He became an attorney. He became attorney general. Now he's a senator. This guy comes from the people. He's a people guy, right? Our government only works if we have people like that in office. But what we have instead are a lot of these old dinosaurs on the left and the right who are so fucking sheltered into their own world. They literally have no concept of what we're dealing with out here in the real world. They have no concept. None. And they don't care either. Mm -hmm. All they care about is maintaining their power, their position of power and uh, making money. And, and dude, our government doesn't work like that. And unless we get a, unless we all get on the same page as people to get these establishment people out of office, meaning on the, on the Republicans and the Democrats and get people from actual common sense America that, that works for a living, that pays their bills, that takes care of their family, responsible people. Unless our government is filled with that kind of people, it doesn't work yeah. and it'll never work again. So our main initiative here as, as citizens of this country should be to realize that what the media does and what these people do is consistently propagate us against each other so that we're too busy fighting each other to notice what they're doing to us. And if we can come together and recognize like, hey, actually, uh, you know, we're not enemies out here in the real world. We're actually just trying to make it go, right? Because we all are. We're all doing our fucking best. Everybody is. Um, and recognize that we're on one team and those dudes are on the other team and we have the power to remove them from their team if we all fucking work together. And if we replace those people with anti-establishment people, our government would be healthy and it would start to work again. Do we need some major reform? Yeah, I, I don't, you know, I've said before in the show, we need to burn it down. What I mean by that is we, we need to like literally burn it down. <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. Don't take, motherfuckers gonna take that clip, bro. I don't give a fuck anyway. The point is, calm down, Kevin. Yeah, no shit. That's just our FBI. Yeah, agent, guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> what we really need to do, though, is like, is to come up with some major reform policies yeah. that serve the people of this country. The lobbying. Yeah, bro. The, like, the dude, term, term limits. limits yeah. No lobbies. No bribes. No insider trading. 
a, a favorable tax code to business and and uh, employees and citizens. Uh, voter reform. If you don't pay in, you can't have a vote. I'm sorry. If you're not paying into the system, you shouldn't be able to vote in the system. That's a, I don't care if you're 16. If you're 16, you pay taxes, fucking vote, man. Mm-hmm. I'm welcome. Dude, you, you're paying in. This whole mentality of, you know, <clears throat> letting people who don't produce have a say in the direction of the country. And what's produced. That's why, dude, yeah. that's why our country is so off track because we have such a high amount of people who don't actually pay anything into the system but take a tremendous amount out of the system that it's skewing the fucking reality of the country that we live in because those people have real power because our voting laws are fucking biased. Like, dude, you shouldn't be able to have a say in the direction of our country if you're not contributing to it. No doubt. So there's major reforms that need to happen. I'm going to tell you this, and I say this all the time, people laugh at me, but dude, if you all fucking elected someone like me or me particularly, I would go in and one term fix all this shit and you would never hear from me again. Like I, I would, I'm not, I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be on the fucking, I don't like Trump's Trump loves. I don't like that. Like you want to fix, get someone like me in there that comes from the street that'll fix this shit and then get the out. I'll be drinking Bud Light on the porch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's real, man. Yeah, dude. That's real. That's real. Like bro, most of us just want to be left alone. And because we don't have anybody in there fighting for us to be left alone, we're not left alone. It ruins our whole life experience. This country's become a fucking laughingstock, dude. Like, I tried to warn you guys for so many years, man. I said, dude, look, when, when these countries, when they look at us, they don't say black Americans, white Americans, gay Americans, straight Americans, yellow Americans, bi Americans, trans Americans. They don't fucking do that. Mm-hmm. They say Americans are fucking stupid. And we are. Because we can't identify the one number f- fundamental reality is that we all have to share this country together, man. Mm-hmm. We're all the same. If I fucking cut you and you, you're fucking black man, you would have fucking red blood just like me, bro. We're the same fucking people. And like this whole idea of all the shit we fight about is costing us literally everything. And unless we wise the fuck up, we're going to prove them right that we are stupid peasants. No yeah, facts. Facts, man. Well, guys, that was headline number two. Let's finish on with headline number three. Headline number three reads, Louisville bank shooter ID'd as portfolio banker pronouns he him <sighs> let's talk about it man uh so this is a bright bar article domestic extremism that's all it is that, that's what it is that's exactly what it is what it is i know you are but what am i it's just not what it's just not the one they say it is they got mike glover on a motherfucking terrorist watch list mm-hmm. probably me too probably you too probably yeah, a bunch of you listen i'm, to I'm just on too. the bottom yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> racism yeah they, keep, they still keep the check and yeah, balances yeah, in yeah. There, you know what i'm saying yeah look dude uh <laughs> I'm on the back of the page you know you gotta flip turn the page around i'm, I'm on there though i got nothing to say <laughs> I, I got some good stuff to say and now i got just go ahead <laughs> i'm sorry just go ahead <laughs> Serious subject, man. All right. We what? Got, we got they, thems. I mean, he, him's out here, man. It's serious. It's real. Not a joke. <laughs> All right. It's not a joke. Not a joke. Uh, so the article reads, the suspect who opened fire in Louis, uh, Louisville, Kentucky's old national bank has been identified as a 23-year-old portfolio banker who listed his pronouns on LinkedIn as, quote, he, him. Uh, he was an old national bank employee. Uh, Breitbart News reported that police were alerted alerted to shots fired at the bank at 8.30 a.m. Monday. Officers arrived on the scene within three minutes of being dispatched uh, and exchanged gunfire with the attacker. Uh, This is his LinkedIn profile. It says he went to the University of Alabama, O National Bank as his employer, um, and his pronouns are there. Um, Four innocent people were killed in the attack, uh, and another eight individuals were wounded. Two police officers were among the wounded. Uh, The attacker was deceased after police engaged him. As of late Monday morning, uh, the Louisville Metropolitan Police Department did not know whether Sturgeon died via a self-inflicted wound or by being shot by police. Uh, WVUA 23 observed that the 23-year-old attacker attended the University of Alabama from fall 2016 to December of 2020, graduating with a Master's of Science in Finance. Um, But here's the thing. This article reads, White House pushes gun control before details of Louisville 
shooting known. Uh, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre re- uh, referenced Monday's attack on Louisville, uh, Kentucky Bank, and pushed for gun storage laws uh, and, quote, assault weapons ban and a, quote, high capacity magazine ban and the ability to file suits against gun manufacturers. Uh, she then noted that Biden wants congressional Republicans to work with Democrats to, quote, ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines to require safe storage for firearms, to require background checks for all gun sales, and to eliminate gun manufacturers' immunity from liability. Jean-Pierre described the proposed gun controls, quote, common sense. But here's the deal. Louisville, this is a CNN article. Uh, Louisville shooter purchased the gun legally last week, according to the interim police chief. Uh, The man who opened fire at Louisville Bank, killing five people, purchased the weapon he used in the attack six days ago, police said. Louisville Metro Police Department Interim Chief Jacqueline Gwen uh, Villaroa said that the shooter bought the weapon legally from the local dealership on April 4th. Now, common denominators here. Okay, We've had our fair share of uh, mass shootings, unfortunately. Um, but let's see if there, we notice any common trends, maybe. Uh, how about that? Shall we? Uh, Yvaldi Shooter. What about him? Uh, what about the Nashville shooting we just had? Right? Or what about the Buffalo grocery store shooting? Who left a far left manifesto. Yeah. Or what about the subway shooter in New York? <sighs> Cameras were out. Right? I mean, at what point? What about the Colorado shooting? What about the Colorado? Yeah, the Colorado. What, 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 about, what about the Christmas Day massacre where they ran over all those people? Yeah, in Wekasha. These are all far left crazy fucks. Okay, all of them. And they're sitting there saying that white, middle America, red, white, and blue, white supremacist, domestic extremists are a problem. When was the last time one of those mothers shot up a place? It's always (laughs) the same people. Okay, and it's getting worse. What do I got on it? I think it's disgusting. I'm so sick of it. Bro, we should have arms... Armed security should be at every school, at every single entrance. And there's no reason taxpaying dollars could do that. No, we could do it. You could do it for what you sent to Ukraine. Easily. Period. Yeah, easily. Easily. Okay. You guys out there who continue to call for gun control because these crazy people are, we, we need to deal with mental health. That's what it is. Okay. And we have, a, it's a lot of things. It's, it's, it's. It's mental health. It's, it's, dude, if you go back to the MFCO, I talked about this on the MFCO project. I talked about what would happen when the kids who were told that life is about participation trophies and not competition and everybody wins and, you know, everybody's special and everybody feels good. What's going to happen when they become adults and they get out in the real world and they realize that nobody gives a fuck. Okay, we care if you produce results. That's the reality. And that's always been the reality. And that's going to continue to be the reality. You know why? Because at the end of the day, people are going to watch their fucking bottom line. Okay, so results are going to matter. Meritocracy is always going to exist. And we have an entire generation of workforce that has been told that their feelings matter and that all this other shit matters and that they're going to win just by showing up. And so we have all these kids who are getting slapped in the face with reality. And notice they're all around the same age. All these shooters are very close to the same age. Very young. They're young. They're in their 20s or they're, they're at late teens. They've all been fucking indoctrinated with this fucking lie. And dude, if you were to grow up being told a lie and then go out in reality and fucking under, like start to see that nothing that you've been told is the truth, we're going to have one, or two resp- one of two responses. One, you're going you're gonna to think everybody in the world is evil, okay? It's not that everybody in the world is evil. It's been you've been lied to about how the way the world is, all right? Second, the other response will be you lose all hope. And that's what creates these scenarios where these people are willing to sacrifice themselves it's a perfect to concoction. make a point, yeah. all right? Then you throw in on top of it the attention clout economy that we live in that's been created and propagated by social media. A lot of these people feel unseen, unheard, like they don't fucking exist. And so what better way to exist than to make themselves uh, a permanent fixture in American culture by killing a few innocent people? Like, it's fucking disgusting, dude. And it's our fault. 
All of these things that have been happening for the last fucking 20 years are our fault. We all fucking know that the world doesn't work on participation trophy. We all fucking know that you will get fired if you don't do a good job. We all fucking know that the world's not fucking fair and that we're not very special. And the only reason that we, we are special is if we go out and create special shit that people recognize. We build shit. We all know these things fundamentally. And we've allowed our education system, we've lied to kids to make their lives easier. We've told them untruth about the way that things are. And for that reason, now we're dealing with the repercussions. And I actually used that exact example on the MFCO project. I, I can remember saying it, and I don't, I'm not going to ask the guys to go look it up because you have to look through all the episodes. But I remember saying it. I said, this is why motherfuckers go shoot up schools. I've explained this exact thing back in 2015, 16. This is why people should, if you, if you take a kid and you lie to him about everything in reality, and then they go out in the real world and they find out, holy shit, not, I'm not equipped. I don't have skills. It's not the way they told me it is. People are fucking mean. They're ignorant. They have no hope. They're angry at the world. And this is the shit that they do. And so this is going to become a bigger and bigger problem. And you know, the solution is we're going to have to, we're, all of us are going to have to fucking start being behind some initiatives to stop these things from happening before they happen uh, in many different ways. But gun control isn't the answer. Banning guns is not the answer. And anybody who thinks that's the answer, you're a fucking moron because you can't understand the basic definition of a criminal. Do you really fucking think that this young man who has been lied to his whole life who's frustrated with the world, who's probably dealing with a whole bunch of different mental illnesses from the fucking phones and the, the, the toxic culture that we all have to live in now because of technology, do you really think that he gives a fuck about your fucking gun law? He doesn't. And it's a fucking bullshit argument. And I can tell you this. If you don't understand what the Second Amendment is for, you're also an idiot. The Second Amendment, the reason all these politicians are so fucking ready to jump on gun control is because that's their only chance to maintain their positions of power. They understand that as long as everybody is armed, they can't actually enforce the fucking uh, plan that they have for our country. Mm -hmm. The minute that we're unarmed, we will be a complete communist country. We will have no control. We will be giving up our rights to criminals. We will be, I mean, that's what they're trying to do. Like this is a much bigger part of a huge play that's been going on for a long time. It's a communist insurgency. They're trying to replace a capitalist republic with a fucking communist system. That's what they're trying to do, okay? So, yeah, they want to take the guns. And, yeah, they're willing to fucking use every single tragedy as the reason to take guns before they even know the details, okay? And it's interesting how they blamed all these shootings on fucking white men who are domestic extremists, white supremacists, KKK, blah, blah, blah. Because I don't remember one of these fucking shootings being done by somebody like that. No. I was talking to fucking a buddy of mine today who's also from Missouri, um, who you guys would all recognize. And we're like, bro, people think like in Missouri with like everybody's running around with some white hood. Maybe some of you motherfuckers that live out in the fucking California and live out in fucking New York and think you're the only people on the fucking planet should actually go to the rest of the country and see what the fuck it's like. It's not what you think no. it is. <laughs> these are hardworking Real fucking people. And these people are disgusted by them. You heard the woman in the Bud Light uh, segment that we did. Like how she talks about. Fratty and like, out dude, of touch. Yeah. Oh, you don't like regular red blood American people that like to drink beer and fucking shoot guns and blow shit the fuck up? Well, guess what? That's most of us, bitch. <laughs> okay. And so like, dude, these people are so Ooh. insulated. They're so insulated in their little fucking pods of Ivy League elitism that they don't realize that they're way outnumbered, they're way fucking out over their skis, and they're in danger now. Mm -hmm. And this is why they're panicking at Washington, D.C. So uh, don't ever give up your guns. Don't ever consider giving up your guns. Don't ever fucking even think of it, and it's never going to fucking happen. They can bitch about it. They can pass every law, but here's what's going to happen. This is what I think. This is how I think they will try to take the guns. How they will try to take the guns is they will try to uh, create mass unrest and then call in a third party nation to try to confiscate the weapons. Third party, uh, like third okay. party entity. Yeah, yeah, NATO or something yeah, like yeah. that, right? Do, so, so, dude, we have to be smart because the minute somebody who is what they say is doing these things does it, 
then they're going to go 10 times harder. Mm -hmm. So like, dude, this can all be resolved nonviolently, very strategically and very tactfully, but we have to be fucking smarter than them. Yeah, man. Like I, I just think about the law part, right? Like, like, okay, just think about it from this standpoint. Let's ban guns. Let's make it illegal to have guns, right? What other things could we just make a law and they'd be illegal and everybody would just stop doing it? I don't know. Mutilating minors would be a good start. Maybe a good start or, you know, um, I don't know. What about underage drinking of alcohol? Yeah, that would stop it. What about murder? What about what about drugs like like cocaine and crack? Yeah, what about rape? That'll stop. Like people. if we make a law about rape, people stop raping people. They'd stop. Rape would cease to exist. Yeah. See, we could fix the whole problem, dude. Just make the like, law. Dude, yeah. Why are you politicians so full of shit? Why aren't you passing anti-rape laws? Yeah, what the fuck? Why aren't you passing anti-murder laws? Why aren't you passing anti-drug laws? Why aren't you doing your fucking jobs? Because we'd all be a lot safer. You see how that logic works? It doesn't. It doesn't, man. Criminals will fucking have weapons. This is why when you go to fucking third world countries, there are two classes of people. There are fucking gangs and warlords and fucking cartels. And then there's everybody else who is the victim of these people. Mm -hmm. This is why people starve in fucking Somalia, dude. But our stupid fucking brains here in America can't grasp the reality of how things really work. And, every, dude, I watched this segment on TV the other day. Somebody, they're walking up to people on the street. They walked up to this woman and they said, what do you think about Joe Biden being ousted as president and Kamala Harris taking over? Something that's completely untrue. Yeah. And she's like, well, you know, I actually think that's a great idea. I think that's a great move. And she goes on for like three minutes talking about how it's a great idea when it's not even something real. Then they walked up to someone else and they were like, what do you think about President Trump being sentenced to life in prison? And they're like, well, you know, I don't think that's fair. I mean, you know, that seems a little stiff, but, you know, it's kind of the way it goes here. Like, bro, they're out of touch. no, there's so many people that are willing to lie to pretend like they know what the fuck is going on. that it's literally sinking our country. And a lot of these motherfuckers are out here consuming this podcast right now. They're, they're listening because they hate. They say, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. No, I fucking actually do. I actually research into this. We have a whole fucking show that does. All right. Like, dude, you guys out here who have these opinions about things that you do not understand at all. And you have, you need to stop talking on them because you're getting, you're going to get yourself killed because this country is going to fucking, we're going to be in a situation where we end up where we're China and there's going to be two classes of people. There's going to be wealthy and there's going to be dirt poor. Do you want to be dirt poor? People are like, well, I'm already poor. No, I'm talking about dirt poor. I'm talking about going down to the corner to get your fucking bread ration and your bowl of rice every day. Yeah. You have no idea what the fuck poor is here in this country, most of you. you have no idea. Bro, do you see those pictures of those kids in Haiti with no fucking clothes mm -hmm. that we go down and build houses for? Those kids are poor. When you see these kids in Africa or in different parts of Asia where they can't fucking eat and their stomachs are all protreated out, that's what we're going to have in America. People don't fucking get it. They think it's impossible to happen here. We're on the fast track to that if we continue to bend for these. The, the whole goal here is to make our American country, this great American nation, a sub-fucking uh, world nation, okay? People don't understand why. Why? Why would they do that? Well, here's why. Because their goal is a fucking global government. Their goal is a new world order, which isn't a conspiracy theory. It's a fucking order of government where all the nations in the world are basically the same, okay? And they're all poor. And it's a global economy. Yeah. And they're trying to suppress, they're trying to suppress actual fucking human beings from being capable. This is why, like, look how much they shit on achievement here in this country right now. If you want to win, you're fucked up morally. If you want to build wealth, you're greedy and immoral. If you want to be fit, you're fat shaming. Mm -hmm. If you want to fucking do anything outside of being a miserable little fuck, you're shamed in some sort of way. Okay? That's not the America I grew up in. No. The America I grew up in is you were, you were encouraged to be all of the best that you could be. That's the cultural revolution that's needed to restore greatness to this country. It's not a violent revolution. It's a cultural one. Even if we had a violent one, the next day we would be on the same culture path and it would just repeat itself over and over and over. If we want our country to fucking get better, we as individuals have to live at a higher standard. That is just the way it's going to have to go. And everybody can look around and they can say, who's coming? Who's coming? Who's? There's nobody coming. It's on us. It's on us to raise our fucking standards, to set a better example, 
to voice up for the things that we think are wrong or right. And if we don't do that, we will end up being one of these third world countries. And there will be two classes of people here that will be the very rich and there will be the very poor. And most of you listening will be in the very poor. That's the reality. And we're not talking about poor. Um, you know, I drive a shitty car. Paycheck to paycheck. I, I, I live paycheck yeah. to paycheck. I'm talking, you won't have nothing to fucking eat. So we have to get smart here. These people are intent on driving our country into the fucking gutter, dude. This is not a fucking conspiracy theory. This is their plan. Every single move that this administration has made over the last three years, if you listed a list of how to destroy America, every single move would be on that list. This is not an accident. Joe Biden is the perfect fucking guy to implement this shit because y'all misjudge his stupidity or his evilness for stupidity. You think, oh, he's just a stupid, senile old man. Everybody says that. Even Democrats say that. Joe Biden's the worst. I can't believe I voted for him. Well, you fucking fell for the play, dude. And you have to wake up and realize that this right left shit is going to get us all killed. Okay? These people are fucking occupying our country. They are not part of our country. They are fucking compromised by the biggest, most powerful enemy that America has, which is China. All right? These people are making intentional moves to, to disrupt and disorder and disenfranchise and corrupt and demoralize everything about America, everything, because they want you to not fight for it. If they can demoralize you to the point where you think nothing matters, then they know you won't fight for it. This is why they push feminism so hard, bro. Mm -hmm. The reason they push feminism so hard is because if we have a bunch of supplicating pussy men out there that don't know how to get fucking laid the right way and can't stand up for themselves and don't become like true men, then do you really think these people are going to fight when you try to fucking take over their shit? Like, dude, all of this, like, we have to understand cancel culture, feminism, uh, you know, silent majority, political correctness, participation trophies. These are cultural weapons intentionally implemented into our system, intentionally implemented into our system to cause and create a weak population that is incapable of defending itself when it comes time to take it. And our biggest enemy on the whole planet is the one that's propagated this for the last fucking 20, 30 years. This, we're at the end game of this. So unless you guys wake the fuck up, bro, we're in deep shit. And that means uh, aside, putting differences aside, letting bygones be bygones. You know, this fucking race division, this fucking who I like to fuck division. I don't give a fuck who you want to fuck, bro. Nobody else does either. The only reason anybody gave a fuck about the LGBTQ TIA shit is because the motherfuckers were fucking with kids. That is it. Even the fucking LGB people in that community hate that shit because it's making them all look bad. There's a huge backlash there. So from what I can see, everybody kind of sees that this is bullshit. But dude, what we have to do is get smart and say, dude, if we keep voting the way that we vote and pretend to know about things that we don't actually know about, we're going to end up with the same result. So like all of you people who are fucking realizing that Bi what Biden's doing is fucked up, you're going to have to consider voting for the other team to save this fucking country. That's real shit. And you got to look past the propaganda. You got to look past the Trump is racist or he's misogynistic or he's a fucking anti-gay. He's none of those things. He's none of those things. Maybe he's misogynistic, dude. He's old. He's white. You know, they grew <laughs> up in a, a different. They grew up in a different area. A, yeah. a different era. Yeah. Okay. Like I've heard some not cool things about Donald Trump and how he's done with women. You know, but like the reality is, is like, dude, we we can either ask for someone who could do the job, or we can ask someone with perfect character. And I don't. I don't think we can get both. So that's what I think about this. I think this is all fucked up, and I think people have to start recognizing what's actually happening or we're in tr real danger within the next couple of years of being a country that is unrecognizable from the things that, that I think we're already unrecognizable from where we were when I, in my life, when America was the best, you know, you have these young kids believing that they're on the forefront of some sort of civil rights movement, bro. Uh, before y'all came along, everybody got along. We all got along. Do you see that video of that one uh, representative? Uh, from Tennessee? From Tennessee, yeah. You they mean showed, trying to speak like he's from the 1960s? Yeah, but they showed like a video from him from like 2016. From 2016. Yeah. And he's a normal dude. Yeah. And now he's, trying, both now, he's, now he's fucking, now he's Al Sharpton. Right. That's a fucking product of our clout attention chasing society. That guy realized that in order for him to get the traction that he needed to progress himself, he had to become a certain kind of character. So he became it. And that's what you, sh you should pay attention to. Everybody should pay attention to that. Because what's that guy's name? 
Look it up. Everybody should pay attention to that because that's exactly what all these people are doing. They're not acting in the best interest of our country. They're becoming the best character that will progress them the furthest along in their lives. That's not the purpose of political office. That's not the purpose of our government system. The purpose of political office and government system is to solve fucking problems that we all have as everyday Americans. That's not happening because we have people that are willing to completely change their entire fucking character, their entire fucking opinion, their entire appearance, their entire persona for fucking clout because of the fucking weapons, which I believe are social media, that have been introduced into society. Justin Jones. Justin jo who? Justin Jones. Jones, yeah. Go look him up before and after. There's a guy right there who is the perfect example of what a fucking politician is, of what we're dealing with. Look at Joe Biden fucking 30 years ago. Look at him now. Look at him 40 years ago. Look at him now. Completely different. This, these people are chameleons. They say whatever the fuck they want. Dude, I just saw a woman from San Francisco who's on the board of, uh, she's either on the board of Alderman or she's on the I committee. Saw that. I saw she, that. Dude, in 2020, she was out in the streets. They have a video of her screaming for defund the police. Yesterday, they had a video of her saying, I've always been an advocate for more police officers. You guys... You guys won't give them to me. You denied mm -hmm. me this. I'm trying to fix it. These people are lying to save their fucking asses. Okay? We cannot forget what they've done. They've done this. They did it. It's happening. It's real. People are losing their lives because of it. These four people that got killed in the shooting, uh, the, the people that got killed in the Nashville shooting, the people who get killed every day and the obscene amount of crime in this country that's just look, looked, uh, looked at like a normal occurrence. That's not normal. Like, we deserve better as fucking Americans, bro. And, like, dude, we're not going to get any better until we can all get on the same page. Facts. And just name correction is Justin Pearson. Pearson? Yeah, Justin Jones is the one they just allowed back in oh, wh uh, Whatever, office. man. Yeah. I'm just saying, man. Like, dude, you guys, like, like, every time I talk like this, people are like, I'm never forgiving this or I'm never that. Well, well then we're going to continue down this road. Mm -hmm. And eventually you're going to have shit to eat. And you ain't going to have a fucking job. And you ain't going to have fucking shit. So is your fucking pride and ego worth that? Or is it worth fucking maybe saying, hey, let's put our differences aside, get these fucks out, and then fix this shit and move the fuck on. And we'll drink a Bud Light when we're done. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> our delicious first form energy. Or, or that. Not an yeah, ad. Not an ad. Well, guys, that was headline number three. Let's wrap this up with our final segment of the show. As always, we have thumbs up or dumb as fuck. That's where we show a headline and we get one of those two options. And with that being said, our headline reads, Missing Texas woman found alive in Jeep submerged in lake. Holy shit. It's kind of weird. This is, this is weird. Damn. Yeah. Might, might be time to get the Jeep. Uh, are they waterproof? They're not waterproof. Fuck, apparently. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, so sheriff's deputies in Texas found a woman who had been reported missing alive in a Jeep that was submerged in water on Friday. The Marion County Sheriff's Department wrote in a Facebook post that deputies had helped recover a submerged Jeep from Lake O the Pines in Marion County, Texas, on April 7th, discovering in the process that, quote, a person was still in the vehicle and moving. Uh, according to the post, the Sheriff's Department was first alerted when a fisherman reported seeing the vehicle near a boat ramp. In one of the photos posted by the Sheriff's Department, the woman can be seen being pulled to safety aboard a small boat. Quote, with the assistance of the Wrecker Service, fishermen, and Marion County deputies, a female was safely rescued from the submerged Jeep, the post read. Quote, EMS responded to the location and transported the female to a local hospital. The Sheriff's Department noted that the woman had been listing, listed as a missing person by the Longview, Texas Police Department. Uh, KRRO7 noted Longview is roughly 30 miles away from the lake. Uh, the department indicated to KSAT uh, that it isn't known how long the vi uh, vehicle had been submerged. In August, as Breitbart News noted, firefighters rescued a woman whose vehicle had been trapped in a sinkhole. The firefighters were assisted by bystanders who had tried to prevent the woman's car from being, uh, becoming fully submerged in the water while she waited for first responders to arrive. Ultimately, the woman crawled to safety uh, through her rear windshield when she was taken to the hospital, having sustained only minor injuries. Here's a couple of uh, pictures of it. So there's the vehicle. It's definitely a Jeep. 
And there was oh, Lindsay. so part of it was like kind of not sticking out of the water. So she must have had her head up in the corner. There. She had to, yeah. Jeep Wranglers are waterproof. Are they really? Yes. Shut the fuck up. Jeep Wranglers well, are they're waterproof. Not, that doesn't mean they're fucking sealed from the outside from water. It just means they'll Bro. still run if they get wet. Well, there's waterproof and water resistant. I know my iPhone. No, it's listen, what's the difference? Listen, I've had multiple <laughs> listen, I've had multiple Jeeps. One Jeep I don't think I ever put the top on. Ever. Hmm. Okay. Well, that like, was definitely not waterproof. No. It, it's <laughs> you watertight and waterproof are two different fucking things, dumbasses. <laughs> okay. All right. Holy shit. <laughs> Am I wrong here? <laughs> Thank you. Smartest dude in the room. Yeah. Two, three different things. Okay. That's all I'm saying. I'm pretty sure they're not watertight. I, in fact, I know they're not. How the fuck do you think the air gets in from the outside? When you drive a Jeep with a snorkel on it, water gets in the fucking cab. Like you're, dry, you're sitting in the water. So the water inside, but, yes. not, but the engine's fine. Yes, it'll That's run because saying. there's a snorkel sticking out of the water. Gotcha. Hummers do the same shit. These are waterproof. Uh, the other models the, with the soft tops, they're water resistant, but not waterproof. Jeep Wranglers are waterproof. But we're talking specifically about water the tight and waterproof. Two different things. And water resistant. Three different fucking things. <laughs> Holy fucking shit, man. Okay. What, what we got what we got on this? It's, on this well, it's thumbs up. I can't believe she fucking lived. Yeah. But like it's there's water in that fucking Jeep. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. Her head was in the fucking corner of the Jeep. That's how she survived. All right. She wasn't sitting in her normal driver's seat, right? Fucking just breathing normal air, talking on her fucking cell phone. Okay, question. Legitimately, do you think those two guys are gonna go drink a Bud Light after this? <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs up for this man. I love it. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good story. Thumbs up, guys. It's amazing. And yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. I might have to get one of those waterproof Jeeps. You might I might have to get a new co-host. <laughs> Andy, guys, that's all I got, man. All right. Guys, don't be a hoe. Share the show. <laughs> <laughs>